This Thursday, 25-year-old Laura Loomer, Jewish independent journalist from Arizona, now living in New York City, handcuffed herself to the entrance door of Twitter headquarters in New York City, protesting her being banned permanently from Twitter and for 30 days from Facebook one week earlier. After approximately two hours, police removed the handcuffs. She was not arrested and Twitter has said they won't press charges. Laura Loomer has been a reporter for the Rebel Media and before that she was working for James O'Keefe's project Veritas, which aims at recording and making public audio and video material showing abusive and illegal behavior by employees and representatives in academic, governmental and service organizations. The reason she was banned from Twitter was that she had made a post where she accused Minnesota politician Ilhan Omar of supporting Sharia law, which she claims opposes the American Constitution. The tweet says, quote, Isn't it ironic how the Twitter moment used to celebrate, quote, women, LGBTQ and minorities, end quote, is a picture of Ilhan Omar. Ilhan is pro-Sharia. Ilhan is pro-FGM. Under Sharia, homosexuals are oppressed and killed. Women are abused and forced to wear the hijab. Ilhan is anti-Jewish." She was banned from Twitter on the grounds of so-called hateful conduct. Now let's see if Loomer's criticism is valid. Ilhan Omar was born in 1981 in Mogadishu, Somalia. Her family fled the country after the civil war broke out in 1991 and they spent four years in a refugee camp in Kenya. In 1995 they emigrated to the US. Umar studied political science and international studies at North Dakota State University from which she graduated in 2011. In 2016 she was elected to the Minnesota House of Representatives for the Democratic Farmer Labor Party. She was the first Somali-American ever elected to le legislati legislative office in the US. On November the 6th, uh, 2018, she became the first Somali-American and one of the first Muslim women ever elected to Congress. Both Twitter and magazines like Time have used her picture as their figurehead, obviously with the aim of expressing their support for a woman and former refugee from the third world. Who made it into politics, presenting her as a role model for other foreign women and immigrants in general. They probably fell into the common leftist trap of idealizing people whom they judged as, belong as belonging to a so-called weak group in society, while at the same time upholding or perhaps refueling the American myth of being the land of unlimited possibilities, where everyone can make it with discipline and hard work. However, did they pay attention at all to what value system Omar is defending and the implications of a Muslim gaining political influence in the most powerful country, not just in the West, but in the world? In 2012, Omar tweeted, quote, Israel has hypnotized the world. May Allah awaken the people and help them see the evil doings of Israel, end quote. When the tweet was reshared in May 2018, she commented, quote, drawing attention to the apartheid Israeli regime is far from hating Jews, end quote. According to her campaign office in a notification from November 2018, she supports the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement, a global campaign promoting boycott against Israel. Thus, Loomer's accusation of Omar as being anti-Jewish is at least partly true, since Omar is clearly very negatively biased towards Israel. In many cases, unreflected and cliched criticism of Israel, of the kind that Omar expressed, is just a masked anti-Semitism. Then, what about Omar's stance on Sharia and FGM, or female genital mutilation? In 2011, Omar had a religious divorce according to Islamic tradition. She was legally divorced in 2017. On Twitter, she posted the following, 
quote, the fear of Muslims implementing Sharia in the US is laughable. We make up less than 1% of the US pop and have only two members in Congress, end quote. However, on the question, quote, would you implement Sharia if you could, end quote, she declined to answer. The woman who asked her this then posted, quote, she didn't answer, she won't, because she would implement Sharia if she could, end quote. In May 2017, Omar argued against a Minnesota state bill to increase penalties against female genital mutilation. The bill calls for the loss of custody and prison terms from 5 to 20 years for parents who subject their daughters to genital mutilation depending on the extent of the injuries. And it also increases penalties for those who perform the procedure. People in Minnesota's immigrant and refugee communities opposed the bill, and Omar too re rejected it, defending existing laws, according to which FGM is also pro prohibited, although she eventually voted for the bill. It is obvious that Omar avoids taking an open stance towards Sharia for career reasons, but her actions and the fact that she refuses to publicly distance herself from it indicates that she is in favor of it. Thus, Loomer's accusation seems to be correct, although obviously Omar's views on FGM are more complex than what Loomer wants to admit. During her handcuffing act, Loomer demonstratively wore a big yellow star on her jacket, reminiscent of the Star of David that Jews were forced to wear in Hitler's Germany, and she repeatedly refer referred to her identity as a Jewish woman. In interviews she gave after the act, she started that she, she thought she had not just a right but a duty to wear the star. Thus, it's possible that Loomer somewhat exaggerated her accusations against Omer for personal reasons. But this notwithstanding, the core of her criticism is obviously true, and the fact that Twitter and some hours later Facebook choose to ban her for making ex accusations that on the whole were correct is a severe attack on free speech in the land of the free and the home of the brave.